Good morning, ladies. This morning, we are starting the section on electromagnetism. And as you can see from the name, this is all about the relationship between electric current and magnetism. Now, Hans Urstedt was the first one who noticed in 1820 that when he brought a compass close to a wire through which current flows, the needle of the compass deflected. The conclusion that he drew from this is that as soon as current flows through a wire, a magnetic field forms around that wire. And we are going to start off by looking at the magnetic fields around different types or uh, different types of wires. So we use magnetic field lines to represent the magnetic field, just like you did when you had to draw the magnetic field around a magnet. So we know that the magnetic field lines are imaginary lines to represent the magnetic field. The shape of the different magnetic fields you have to learn and magnetic field lines also have direction because the magnetic field has direction and there are rules that you have to learn that you apply to determine the direction of the magnetic field. So the first one that you need to look at is the magnetic field around a straight current carrying conductor. So over here I've got a straight wire and it's, there's a cell connected in the circuit, so current is flowing through the wire. So now we know that as soon as this happens, a magnetic field is going to form around the wire. The magnetic field is represented as concentric circles around the wire. I prefer this one, which shows quite nicely the concentric circles, which represent the magnetic field that forms around the wire. Now, you must be able to determine the direction of the magnetic field. And to do that, we use something called the right-hand rule, or sometimes also referred to as the right-hand wire rule. If you point your thumb of your right hand in the direction of conventional current, your curled fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field. The symbol that we use for magnetic field, as you can see over there, is a B. So take a look over here. Thumb points in the direction of conventional current. And I'm sure you can still remember that conventional current is from the positive terminal of the cell around the circuit towards the negative terminal of the cell on this side. So thumb of your right hand points in the direction of conventional current and your curled fingers will give you the direction of the magnetic field. So you can see the curled fingers point in this direction. So that is how I know that that is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. Even if you look at this one, if my thumb points upwards, because that is what the conventional current is doing, oopsie, my curled fingers point in this direction and that gives me the direction of the magnetic field. Then we can also represent this as a cross section through the conductor. So if I go and I just make a cross section through this wire and I look at it from above, all I'm going to see is a circle which represents the wire. Now if current is traveling away from me, the symbol that we use to represent that is the circle with a cross in. And if the current through the wire is traveling towards me, the symbol that we use is the circle with another little circle in it. And the easy way to remember this is to think about a dot. If a dot comes flying towards you, you see the sharp end, you see the round part. And if it flies away from you, you see the feathers at the end, which is represented by that cross over there. So, over here, this represents the wire, a cross section through the wire. And the current here is flowing away from me. So if my thumb points away from me into the paper, my cold fingers will do that. And that is how I know 
that that is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. And on this side, the circle shows me that the current is flowing towards me. So if the current is flowing towards me, my thumb is pointing up, cold fingers will do that. And that is how I know that this is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. The second one that you need to know, so all of that applies to a straight current carrying conductor. The second one is a current carrying loop with a single turn. So you can see over here, now I've got a loop. So current is flowing up there, it's flowing around and it's flowing in there because we're still using conventional current, we always do. Now on the piece of paper, you can see the pattern of the magnetic field. So this is what I meant when I said that is what you learn so that you can draw that. If I go and I'd make a cross section through there and a cross section through there, then this is the pattern that I'm going to see. So yeah, the current is coming towards me, it's flowing around and it's flowing into the paper over there. So if we have to describe the magnetic field, we can say that the magnetic field lines outside the coil are almost circular. The magnetic field lines in the center, so over here, are almost straight. And how do I know in which direction the magnetic field is going to be? Once again, I use the right hand rule for the direction. So yeah, my thumb will point towards me and the curl of my fingers will give me the direction of the magnetic field. Yeah, my thumb will point into the paper and the curl of my fingers will give me the direction of the magnetic field. The next one is the magnetic field around a solenoid. A solenoid is where a large number of insulated turns of wire are, um, forms a cylindrical coil. So we've got something that looks like that. Now, what do you have to learn? What does the magnetic field look like? And that is what the magnetic field look like, looks like. It almost looks like the magnetic field around a magnet. Now for this, you must be able also to give the direction of this magnetic field. Now to do this, we have to determine the polarity of the solenoid. So we have to determine which side is north and which side is south. To do this, we use the right hand solenoid rule. So what we say is, when the fingers of your right hand are pointed in the direction of conventional current, your thumb will point in the direction of the North Pole. So we imagine that we're holding the solenoid in our right hand and that the curl of our fingers point in the direction of the current. My thumb will point to the right and that is how I know that this side is going to be the north and that side is going to be the south pole of the solenoid. Now why do I need to know this? Because now this you also learn the magnetic field outside the solenoid points from north to south and the magnetic field inside the solenoid points from south to north. So to do that I need to know which side is north and which side is south. So outside the solenoid over here north to south, that's how I know, in that direction for the arrows, inside the solenoid, south to north, and that's how I know that that is going to be the direction of the magnetic field. And then lastly, if a solenoid has a solid metal core, it is, rep it is um, called an electromagnet. And I'm sure you can still remember everything about electromagnets. They are temporary magnets. And we can switch the magnetism on and off by turning the current on and off. And the strength of an electromagnet depends on the strength of the current, the number of turns in the coil, and the type of metal from which the core is made. And soft iron works the best and makes the strongest electromagnet. And lastly, a couple of uses of electromagnets they can be used to lift heavy scrap metal. They are used in loudspeakers and telephone receivers, in electric bells. Electromagnetic suspension is also used for maglev trains. So that's where they use so-called magnetic levitation. And if, if you are interested, you can go look that up in a little bit more detail. Not for exam purposes though, 
and lastly electromagnets are also used in computer hard drives and that is all for this lesson thank you ladies <laughs>